So this video is about FSU IPC 7 for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So some of you may have seen my earlier video on um, FSU IPC. It's a magnificent program made by a chap called Pete Dowson. Um, it's the first program that I uh, always install whenever I reinstall the simulators and basically it allows for the simulator to engage with other programs, other um, equipment like panels and what have you. You don't need to have the paid for version to do that basic interface, but for some of the tweaking, then you will need to buy the um, paid for version, but it is actually, in my view, really, really great value for money. So when Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 was first launched, um, the guy struggled with FSU IPC7. Initially, it was a separate program that had to be started first and had to be um, had to interface separately with uh, the simulator but that that wasn't uncommon um, SimConnect also had similar problems when Microsoft first launched the simulator but through the iterations and the updates that have come through since the end of last year into uh, January February 2021 then that has become much more um, effective um, FSU IPC 7 uh, now starts with the simulator and I'm just going to give you a couple of tips around um, how you can then manipulate that program and use it to best effect and I'm assuming that you've bought the paid for version so I'll be honest I kind of stumbled, stumbled over this that it isn't obvious where FSU IPC 7 settings are in um, in the previous iterations, they um, it provides a modules menu. You simply uh, click and then select the FSU IPC interface. But in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it is equally easy to open, provided you know where it is. You just select Alt and then F. So we go through how we install it. So similar to last time, if you go into the uh, Pete Dowson's uh, website to select FSU IPC 7 and the associated wide FS program. Uh, download that to your computer, simply unzip the, um, the folder and then click install. As I say, I recommend that you buy the paid for version, then you'll have a license number both for FSU IPC 7 and WideFS to uh, input into the program as you install it. And you can you can go back to my previous video what, because the installation is exactly the same across the network and how you use WideFS uh, with this new version of, um, of uh, the program. You simply need to install WideFS in, uh, on the networked computer and it simply works. So again, similar to the previous version of FSI, um, FSU IPC, you can make a number of different changes. So um, each of the menu items are pretty self-explanatory. You can change the assignments of the uh, axes of your various controllers, whether that be your, um, your yoke or the throttle quadrant. You can change the buttons that are clicked on those controllers so how those uh, those various um, keys and buttons are um, are assigned and you can select and allocate particular um, key presses to um, either the keyboard or to um, to um, to other keys that you've got on your um, on your controllers Again, I would say that no question in my mind, this is the most versatile, most useful and best value um, addition. I would always 
um, install it first time and I am delighted that it now works with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in such an effective way. Um, hope you hope that was useful. If you um, if you liked it, then feel free to like and um, subscribe if you want to be updated as and when further videos are um, are released. And uh, leave me any comments. I'm really interested in anything that you have to say and anything else you think I could make any videos on that you would uh, find uh, useful. So that's all I've got for you in this video and I'll catch you next time.